I'm taking this scene as a starting point, the scene that I finished with at the end of this video, and the reason for that is that I've already got the lighting set up. And what I want to do is show you how to generate some terrains from the Deep Texture Editor as an alternative to painting them. So I'm going to take my terrain here, go to the overhead view, select that terrain, edit it, and I'm going to reduce its resolution so we can go in and out of the labs faster. So I'll just drop the resolution to massive resolution there and check out. And I'm also going to copy and paste this terrain. I'll just put this to one side and edit this and I'm going to lower the resolution still further and then I'm going to use the shift key and click on picture and that will take me into the deep texture editor. Now I'm going to show you where to navigate to so you want this little menu here, go to basic and select wave 2. Check out of that. At the moment we've got a colour output here and what we need is a grayscale to provide a height map so click on this arrow here and switch the colour mode off so you've only got a grayscale output and then when you check out of here the terrain surface will be generated. Now, the thing to be aware of is once you've switched a terrain over to the control of the deep texture editor you can't do anything else to it so if we were to paint on this for example and check out and then go back in again it would regenerate and be reset so if you want to modify this you need to copy the height map into an ordinary terrain which as it happens we've got handy so I'll just do control C and that will copy the height map now check out of here now go back to this which is an ordinary terrain control C control V I'll just move this to one side now edit this drop the resolution to match the other one and then use control V and you can paste the height map in and then any filtering or painting that's done to this will stay in place it won't be reset because it's not been linked to the deep texture editor we've just got this as an ordinary height map now so I'll check out of here and what I want to do is turn this terrain on its edge so edit go to the rotation control here hold shift key down so you can control the rotation and turn it right on its edge I'll move that around and turn it so what I'm going to do I'll just get hold of my main terrain move that back a bit is create a channel to look down so I'm just shrunk that terrain down a little bit use this arrow to lift it up so it's placed on the water surface this is the one that generated the deep texture editor version well I don't need that now so I'll just stick with this one I can copy and paste this one now the advantage of copy and pasting these terrains is it, it allows some of the settings to be transferred so when I created this terrain I made sure I set it to solid but I don't need to do it now for these other ones because I'm just copy and pasting and that will have remained in place so I'll just position those either side switch to the main camera view and see what we've got okay so it's going to preview rather slowly because this is set up for final rendering so I'm going to modify the render options and reduce this to 4 rays per pixel for previewing I'm going to change the document setup because I've created quite a tall feature in the scene so to what was it 16 9 I think that's the HD format oh. I need it to be smaller than the screen as well so you can see what's going on so I'll put 850 in there so now you can see in the wireframe preview and I'll give it a quick render you can see where we are we're looking down this channel now the good thing about transient lighting is by this getting some light on this side it will be transferred and light in this side as well otherwise this would just be in darkness so I'm going to shift the camera back a bit so we get a bit of view out through the top make it a bit more dramatic I'll lower the camera view slightly. The sun is landing on this edge here, as you can see, so that's a good sign. So I'm just uh, just composing the scene now. I've got this feature in the middle and a bit of reflection. Now, I had uh, got some, I think there's some blurred reflection response in this uh, water surface. So let's have a look. I want this water surface material. So let's see. It's uh, no, it's not the thing in the specular halo, but I think I have got some with an anisotropic reflection setup and there is a, a tutorial for this so I'm going to use that since I'm using premium effects I might as well and I've got blurry reflection set already so I might be able to get some good reflections looking down this tunnel the waters in darkness so let's see I'll set this up at 36 rays per pixel and we'll have a look how long that's going to take so a relatively simple operation but the advantage of turning the trains on the side, the main bit is that it allows you to have overhanging sections. 
And if you mix that up with your other sections of the train, which are more or less like stamped out of a jelly mould, then uh, it just creates a bit of variety. Hopefully then the anisotropic reflections will work on the water here. Render time is about 1 hour 40 minutes, so I'll pause the video at this point and we'll see what we've got at the end of that render. Here then is the completed render, and you might notice that there's a bit of an issue here. There's a very straight line, and this is because somewhere in this terrain it's gone to the edge. It's a straight line, and obviously it's taken a couple of hours to render this, and it'd be nice if I could just get rid of that bit and the bit that's in the reflection there. So what I'm going to do, because although this was based originally on a height map generated from the deep texture editor, because it wasn't linked in this terrain, because it was just the height map that was copied over, I can actually modify this still further by uh, painting it or filtering it. So if I select this terrain, edit it, I could try painting this down, but really it's already at its lowest level, or it could be that bit. I don't know which of these two bits, but they're the lowest level. However, I can modify it by lifting this edge of this bracket up which makes this bit now go transparent and if I check out of there and then carefully on the uh, on the render here position the plot render so I want to get it on this area get to get as little as possible in in the plot render there so it'll render faster so if I, uh, if I just do that bit then instead of a two hour render I've only got well at the moment it's predicting four minutes it may go up or down, it just depends. Um, it's not usually too bad, it's prediction for rendering. So I'll just let that render out. It's gone down three minutes now, and see whether there's any other issues. But, so hopefully that's demonstrated how you can modify these and how you can correct small errors without having to re-render the entire scene. So anyway, I'll, I'll put this up at the end of the video and you can see how it's turned out. But uh, really that's it for the end of this video now. Cheers. Uh, turn the plot render off so you can see. There you go. Blends in perfectly. Job done.